Welcome to CSET Biology TCP. I am Mr. Wilson and we are doing the May June 2017 Biology Paper 1. I have Anai with me today and Anai will be helping us going through this paper. So you will be hearing his shout every now and then as we move through the paper. So it is 2017. Please be reminded that it is expected that you follow through with your textbook and teacher as we intend to provoke a conversation and learning rather than regurgitation. So it's very important that you check and follow the suggestions that were given to the questions. Please ensure that you are using your textbook, ensure that you're having dialogue with your friends, ensure that you're a part of the live session. And we also encourage you to read the comment below the video because that's where we place updates when they become available. Let's hop right into the paper. Question number one, which of the following features is used to classify a group of organisms as class in sector? If I remember well, this is the very same question on the 2016 paper. Here we have size, shape, color, and of course segment. It is of course going to be segments as insects are divided into head, thorax, and segment. And of course all the others are pretty much typical of all organisms. Question number two. Which of the following option correctly defines the term niche and, of course, habitat? However, niche is pretty much a role of the organism in the ecosystem, what it does, where it belongs, what it eats, that type of a thing. And habitat is where the organism is found or, of course, live. So here it might be very easy for us to figure this one out. Looking at A, I want you to read for me. I might not be reading all the options as you are working the paper with me. So, of course, A, we're seeing there the role that an organism play in the habitat. Uh, look at that. The place where an organism lives. I think here, looking at A, B, C, the most appropriate answer for me is, of course, going to be A. So we're going to be selecting A for that answer. Great. And we're going to move on down to question number three. Question number three. Which of the following organism may present harm to one of the organism involved? I tell you, the arrangement of the paper is somewhat consistent. We're thinking about harm here. If it's a commensal relationship, one benefit and one is neither harm nor, of course, benefit. Uh, when we look at parasitism, now this is a relationship between organism and, of course, the organism must be alive in the interaction. And here, one of the organism uh, pretty much benefit where the other is hurt. Now, the other uh, predation, predator-prey relationship, where one organism hunts and, of course, feed on the other. So what is going to be our answer? The commensalism is out, so we're going to be looking at C as the preferred answer. As C speaks to uh, parasitism and predation. That must have been very easy for you. We move on to question number four. Question number four refers to the following food web. Interestingly, a food web is a combination of food chains. Now, if we look here at the food web, it begins with the lignum vitae. I think that is the Jamaican national flower. I've been out of primary school so long. I do hope I remember well. And, of course, the grass, both are, of course, uh, the producer. Just above, we have a primary consumer, which would have been caterpillar grass, upper and goat. They are all herbivores. And above, we have the omin bird. This seems to be a Jamaica food web. And the omin bird, they are not a national figure or national animal uh, we have here. And it is pretty much uh, feeding on the caterpillar. I didn't know that. This is news to me. Here we have chicken. And the chicken is, of course, getting some caterpillars. And uh, based on what's happening here, all these organisms are herbivore. But I didn't know about the omin bird. That's really news to me. There being the apex predator. And he is pretty much having a good meal of chicken. The omin birds still have me a little baffled, but I think I'll have to do some reading on that. Question number four. A herbivore, a carnivore, 
and omnivore respectively are so we want to identify herbivore so herbivore is going to be all those organisms that are immediately above the producer which are, would have been caterpillar uh, grasshopper and goat now lizard uh, sorry carnivore carnivore would have been those organisms that are immediately above our primary consumer would have been here the omin bird cricket and lizard and then omnivore would have been an organism that is eating both plants and of course animal now uh, sadly it is not stated here we can't make that determination here from what we're seeing on the food web so we'll have to draw for some general knowledge so we know the goat of course is a herbivore we know based on what's here that the lizard is of course carnivore and we also know that man you and i we would have been having nice meals of vegetable and our best meat so a there the answer question number five which of the following organism are most important in biodegradation now this is a nice thing we usually talk about uh, saprophytes and in saprophytes we talk about detritivore and decomposer so we are looking at what will pretty much break down we're looking at the breakdown biodegradation breakdown so breakdown an organism here we have bacteria vulture uh, omnivores and earthworm the earthworm there being a of course a detritivore while the bacteria decomposer and the vulture would fall in the group of sacrifice omnivore they are organism of course which eat both plants and animal and of course the answer here is going to be bacteria question number six which of the following is not true about decomposer interesting what is not true about a decomposer and decomposer are usually our fungi and the bacteria so they release nutrient for recycling well that is one of their key function they produce faster in low temperature think about why we'd have food in the fridge and see if that is plausible any at all they are more abundant in damp places uh, think about at least foot uh, then look at D they prevent the accumulation of dead organic matter well if we think about them being uh, responsible for biodegradation then we would ne definitely know that that is not the answer so here our answer is going to be B and we move on to question number seven and question number seven refers to another diagram that pretty much fits a food web item number seven refers to the simple food web construct from some organism found in the arboreal region of a tropical rainforest arboreal arboreal so if we're talking about arboreal we are talking about things like birds in the tree they are usually found there so let us move on down seven the predator in the food web are predator uh, the predatory relationship is sometimes used to refer to herbivory that is a relationship between a producer and a primary consumer but here our answer is going to be let's look at what is there we have a producer the fig so that can't be a bit of predatory stuff uh, the other tree there durian that can't be involved so two and one is already out the macaw is eating the fig uh, let us look and see if there's a more suitable answer and when we look at five the taku or taco uh, that is eating the plant so here this particular question is ruling out the whole idea of a 
predatory relationship being between plant and animal but of course it could be so we're going to look at predatory relationship we could start at, at the top coming down that is the easiest way to solve the question so when we look at six the eagle there is going to of course be a predator but it says the predator in the food line. so the eagle is going to be a predator and of course the taco is also a predator so we are going to go with D being the easiest D being the easiest but like I said in some circumstances the herbivory relationship is considered predator prey but today it's not considered predator prey so we're just going to be moving on to question number eight question number eight only about 10 percent of the energy stored in food is available to the next organism in a food chain let us look at that Only about 10% of the energy stored in food is available to the next organism in a food chain. And we want to find a reason for that. Most of the energy is lost as heat during the process of respiration. These are repeated questions. B, most of the energy is lost during the process of excretion. <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, C, uh, there are fewer consumer than producer well that is out uh well that is true but that is out uh many consumer compete uh for the same food source well do all those are true but what is the best answer the best answer is going to be energy is lost as heat during the process of respiration right so energy is also lost during the process of excretion but the best answer here is going to be a which of the following is the main advantage of recycling and of course you'd know that recycling is the least efficient of the three r's so here we have recycled products are cheaper we have recycled products are more durable. We have recycle, recycling saves on raw material. And we have recycle create jobs. We recycle create jobs. Recycle uh, produce not necessarily more durable stuff. But the most suitable answer for us is going to be that it saves on raw material. And of course, if we save on raw material, then we are reducing the damage to our environment by removing the raw material from the environment and pretty much going into a uh, real uh, production that once there is production there is waste so we'll have uh, we're, we're going to be having more waste and of course more things to deal with in the environment that we really don't want to address so the answer there for nine is going to be c for question 10 which of the following statement best outline why the coral reef in the Caribbean yeah. are at risk? Now, this is a very wonderful question, uh, and it's a repeated question. There has been overfishing of invasive species. Uh, no, not, not really. Uh, the lionfish, and I know that we're not overfishing invasive species. Invasive species refer to those organisms that are not really native. They are not uh, endemic. They were brought in most cases in as exotic organism and then when we couldn't control them then we released them in the wild and they became invasive now the caribbean is a 
popular tourist destination. That's another, that's another thing. The Caribbean is a popular tourist destination. And then we have, uh, there have been hurricanes in the Caribbean. And then we have many hurricanes in the Caribbean. There has been a decrease in the volume of sewage. So here we are going to look at B being our answer. And the, re the reason B is the answer is because with tourists, uh, we're going to have more sewage. With tourists, we're going to have more pollution. With tourists, we're going to have more use of the road. With tourists, there might possible, one or two might possible uh, venture into the water. So the derivatives, so to speak, from tourism is more than just the tourists getting into the sea, but all the other pollutants that are associated must be treated with as well in order to solve this particular question. Now let's look at this question, which is also a repeated question. It would have been repeated many a times. This is a 2017 biology paper. Item 11 refers to the following diagram. And in this diagram, we're expected to find out which of the following factor most likely account for the change in the population size from January, from January 1980 to January 1989. Now, January, we're looking from this section here to this section here. It's important to note that between this section, there's a rise in the population and then we have a fall in the population. Now, what could have accounted for that rise in population and then that drastic fall in population? It must have been a combination of factors. Now, let us look at this. The increase in contraceptive use, as it were, in Jamaica between 1980 upward would have caused a decrease in the population, much to the credit of what we have now as a unique uh, population pyramid. Uh, epidemic of a deadly disease if we had a deadly disease this too could have caused uh, a whole lot of wipeout like if we had think about the uh, great plagues you could think about the irish potato blight you could think of the many diseases that were over the ages and those two could have decreased the population size now increase in migration if you couple it with all these that are here all three could of course cause significant decline in a country's population if people are allowed to migrate as we would have seen with urban or rural urban drift where persons are leaving country coming into a, a town we could have that with a country but all those could account for the decline in the population what about the increase in the population now so the increase in the population because we're looking at a nine-year span could have been because of the, a decrease in fatal crimes. Now, if we are thinking about nine years and we had a decline um, anywhere about 1980, they would have more persons gaining confidence in their country. They are now reproducing and trying to settle and have a wonderful life. So here they are now right after that storm or war or whatever it was. Uh, right after now you start to reproduce and then you see what happened. Uh, well, people started So my answer here Of course, I like to say my answer My answer is going to be D Because there must have been something that contributed to the rise in the population Yes, it is saying between 1980, but look at that line going through. There is a rise there in the population which must be accounted for. It's not just the fall in the population. We must account for that little rise there in the population as well. That's my interpretation of a question. Item 12. When compared to a cheek cell, a muscle cell contains more. Well, this is a textbook thing. It's going to be more mitochondria the liver and muscle cell would contain a whole lot of mitochondria let us look at the item 13 item 13 refers to the following diagram of a bacterium 
and bacteria pretty much they are not eukaryotic organism they are prokaryotic organism so they really don't have any membrane bone organelle now what the question wants us to look at here it is asking what is x now x is pretty much strands of one would say dna x is of course going to be strands of dna so just let me get that again and i those are your best answers all right so now we move on to question number 14 which of a following comparison of a, of a cell wall and cell membrane is incorrect now we're looking at a comparison here now so cell wall are uh, found in plant cells only that is true cell membrane are uh, found in both plant and animal cell that is true uh, cell wall is somewhat freely permeable cell membrane is differentially permeable and then cell wall contains cellulose yes that only the herbivores can digest in most cases and of course does not contain uh, cellulose that's a cell membrane great so it doesn't have that rigid shape or fixed shape so our answer if none of those are incorrect then these naturally going to be the answer uh, cell wall uh, found in both plant and animal cell that is not true all right so we have Anna in the background there giving his suggestion of answers which is just flipping the lips all right 15 refers to the following diagram which shows a process by which substance are moved into and out of cells into and out of cells all right you would have seen i would have had a video of this on my channel you can go and look now let us see what is required of us for 15 which of the following correctly identify and describe the process occurring above so we want to look at what is happening above let us look at what is happening All right, so we have sugar on one side, we have water on one side, and we, we started out here with a concentrated solution and a dilute solution. Now, it's very important to note here that this line here would have been the differentially permeable membrane. So this is pretty much osmosis because they are in the same container and there is movement taking place. So we know that it is osmosis. Now, another thing we observe is that the dilute solution on this side, uh, there's a greater net movement to the concentrated solution. Now, be mindful that both dilute solution and concentrated solution is moving across the membrane. If you look here at this here, it represents the concentrated solution, which we started out with over here. And of course, if you observe over here, we have, so we have movement going in both directions, but the net movement are most of the particles, water particles, are moving into the concentrated solution. So we're seeing here that water is moving from a place where it is in low concent, where it is in high concentration, into an area where there is low concentration. So let us look at what is that mean. So remember, we had the water here, high concentration. And because this is concentrated, it is low concentration, the water would have moved across and you are seeing this increase here. Well, let us look at what the question, what the suggestions are. Now, we know we're not going to be looking at diffusion because we would have seen the selectively permeable or differentially permeable membrane. So osmosis, a water moving from dilute to concentrated solution. That's what we saw. Osmosis, sugar moving from concentrated to diluted solution. We are looking at the net movement. So because of the net movement, our answer is definitely going to be C. Moving on down, 60. Item 16 refers to the following table, which shows the result of food tests uh, performed on three food samples, X, Y, and Z. All right, so we are seeing violet color, with sodium hydroxide and copper sulfate suggests a protein and blue black 
uh, with iodine, so just starch, and we are seeing this orange precipitate, and we are seeing hydrolysis there, which suggests that that is non-reducing sugar. Alright, so let us just up and down to see what are the options. And I am sure you can do a better job than you are doing now. Alright, so D is going to be our answer here. D, remember we said protein, starch, non-reducing sugar. Alright, so we move on to the other question. All right, which of the following are true about nutrition? All right, so we know that there are pretty much three types of nutrition, autotrophic nutrition, heterotrophic nutrition, and saprophytic nutrition. In autotrophic nutrition, what happens is that the organism uses simple inorganic substance to manufacture complex um, organic substance. And of course, the blue-green algae would of course be in an example. They are found around hot springs and so on and so on. Um, then we have heterotrophic nutrition, which of course, uh, they come, the, the, these organisms tend to depend on the autotroph for food and they consume, they consume uh, some complex organic substance to produce uh, simpler substances, like the reverse happening here. And then we have uh, saprophytic nutrition, and with the sacrifice, they are going to be feeding on dead and decaying, pretty much releasing energy back to the, are reducing the nutrients back into the ecosystem. The use of dead organic matter to manufacture. So if we look here, fungi, again, it's a decomposer and it is also saprophyte. Human, um, heterotrophic organism, as it depends on other organisms for food. So our best answer here is, of course, going to be D. If we look at 18, item 18 refers to the following graph showing the relationship between light intensity and photosynthesis. This is of course a repeated question and the answer is going to be very very simple for us. It appears at, uh, let's look at it and try and figure it out. Alright, so the answer here is of course going to be B. As light intensity increase, there is an increase in photosynthesis in the rate due to some other limiting factor. So we go with B here. Now we're moving to question 19. 19. An enzyme is best defined as a molecule which... Uh, this is interesting. Remember that enzymes are not organisms. They are actually molecule. And if we look at A, increase the rate of a chemical reaction. Look at that. Most persons fall for that. Uh, decrease the rate. Uh, that is O. Increase the rate of a chemical reaction, but remains unchanged at the end. So if you observe, A is correct, but it is not the best. Pay attention to the best. The best answer for us is not going to be D or B. Uh, A is also correct, but the best answer is, of course, going to be C. So we have to pay attention to the word best, which means that there's possibly more than one correct answer, but one is a little more suitable than the other. A 50-year-old male is advised by his doctor to pay special attention to the amount of salt in his diet. He probably has a high chance of developing, well, if it's salt and the body must maintain that internal, constant internal environment, then here, the most logical of them all, not obesity, not diabetes, uh, we think it is hypertension. Then we move on to 21. Item 21 refers to the lungs. And the surface area of lungs is going to increase by the, well, the surface area of lungs is always increased by the amount of alveoli as the amount of leaf as it were for trees. 
So our answer here, having gone through these, double membrane, blah, 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 our answer is going to be B. Answer for 21 is going to be B. And then we move on down to 22. 22, I am 22 refers to the following diagram of a respiratory system. And diagram of a respiratory system, which labeled part represent the ribs? Well, it's pointing on it, so then it can only be that. So it's going to be B here. And we move on to 23, which of the following is an effect of nicotine found in cigarette smoke? Nicotine. All right, it's going to, let's look at that. Increase nicotine, increase the heart rate. Yes, yes, um, it is a tar that would affect the will not increase the beating of the cilia. Uh, carbon monoxide would be responsible for C. Our answer here is, of course, going to be yeah. 24. Which of the following is true for aerobic and anaerobic respiration? Interesting. Uh, aerobic respiration does not use oxygen. Uh, so that is out. We're not going to go with that. All right. B uh, occurs in the cytoplasm. We're not going to go with that either. So C release large amount of energy. That one hit bang release small amount of energy. C. We're going to go with C. C. Uh, remember that we are supposed to read all. Don't follow. We are supposed to read all to ensure that we have the best answer uh, for the question. You would have heard Anna in the background. He's pretty much reading as I am reading. And I don't know how to treat with that. So he's here just assisting you in getting ready for the exam as well. Forgive Anna in the background. Alright. Which of the following statement is not true of a xylem? Of a flowering plant, not true of a xylem. Now the xylem, we know that the xylem is dead. We know that it is highly lignified. We know that it transports water and mineral salt. We know it does not have a companion cell, and we know that the seed plates are missing. So here, it is non-living. That is true. It contains mitochondria. That is not true. Mitochondria is pretty much associated with the phloem. So we know that this is not true. Then we could look at lignify. Yes, it is lignify and transport water and minerals. So all that is true. So we can move on down to 26. Which of the following option best identify some of the transport substance in animals? All right, some transport substances in animals. A uh, lot of things are transported. We have amino acid. We are going to have hormone, but we're not going to be having sucrose being transported. So, of course, our answer here is going to be A. And we move on down. This is a repeated question. Uh, there are many repeated questions, uh, but some just pop right up when you see them. So I'm sorry for that if I'm saying this is a repeated question as if it's the only one. It's not the only one. All right, so we would have known our diagram of the heart and, of course, that blood vessel, that arch there at the top of the heart is, of course, the aorta. And then we have, coming from that right side, there's going to be the pulmonary artery carrying the oxygenated blood to the lungs. And then we're going to have the pulmonary vein taking back that blood to the heart. It's now oxygenated. And we have for four there, the bicuspid, or one might say the mitral valve. So A is, of course, going to be the answer for this. There's no other way you can look at this. If you see the answer here for the diagram and you read the question properly, um, you're going to be fine. This is also a repeated question straight from the 2016 paper. I don't think anything would have changed. Uh, the essential vitamin and mineral salt required for blood clotting in human are, of course, we're going to remember that every time that it's going to be vitamin K and of course calcium all right so not vitamin C but calcium C A calcium artificial immunity can best be described as immunity acquired from the body's natural defense against disease mm -hmm. in it um, produced by deliberate exposure 
exposure yes as if you got uh, a vaccine mm -hmm. so that one there pretty much stands out for me that has been passed on from no that is a passive thing uh, from mom and then D that has what that has been passed mm -hmm. on from mother in the classroom uh, one thing we need to remember about this with this particular thing immunity we have a video mm -hmm on the channel that breaks down immunity right down you cannot afford to watch that video and not know about immunity but we did a comprehensive video on immunity and how to understand all the types of immunity so here our answer is going to be b for 29. we're at question 30. although glucose is found in the blood plasma it does not appear in the urine because a very interesting question and again a repeated question and of course it is because not osmosis not because secretion not just because ultrafiltration but instead because of selective reabsorption so it's taken up back so it's not even if it got there into the nephron it's collected now this brings us to the end of the 30 questions intended to be answered for part one we are very grateful for having Anai answering some of the questions in the background. And of course, just reminding us that we can study together, we can study with the family. Of course, we want to get the younger ones involved. They might not understand clearly what you're doing, but their involvement is, of course, very, very important. Thanks so much for watching. Please be reminded to like, share, and of course, subscribe. When you subscribe, remember to hit that notification bell and select all so that you'll be notified as soon as there is a new publication. Now, another thing you want to do, you want to watch this video or know that you're at the end. Wait to the end and you're going to be seeing that link at the top to the biology playlist for past papers. And you'll also find videos that are recommended by YouTube for you to watch. And of course, the most recent video, which of course would have been a biology past paper video, probably the other 30 questions to this paper. Again, thanks much for watching and see you later.